Hello and welcome to Learning Studio. Until recently, it was widely believed that the scientific method guaranteed objectivity and that science produced information in a steady, progressive way. It was assumed that the world consists of noble truths and that following scientific procedures allowed science to systematically approximate those truths. In other words, scientific activity was guided by the correspondence theory of truth, the notion that the goal, when evaluating scientific laws or theories, is to determine whether or not they correspond to an external, mind-independent world. Thomas Kuhn changed that conception of science by showing science to be a highly subjective enterprise. Paradigms in Normal Science According to Kuhn, in the physical sciences one viewpoint is commonly shared by most members of a science, in physics or chemistry, for example. Most researchers share a common set of assumptions or beliefs about their subject matter. Kuhn refers to such a widely accepted viewpoint as a paradigm, although Kuhn used the term paradigm in several ways. Most typically he defined it as the entire constellation of beliefs, values, techniques, and so on shared by the members of a given community. For those scientists accepting a paradigm, it becomes the way of looking at and analyzing the subject matter of their science. Once a paradigm is accepted, the activities of those accepting it become a matter of exploring the implications of that paradigm. Kuhn referred to such activities as normal science. Normal science provides what Kuhn called a mopping-up operation for a paradigm. While following a paradigm, scientists explore in depth the problems defined by the paradigm and utilize the techniques suggested by the paradigm while exploring those problems. Kuhn likened normal science to puzzle solving. Like puzzles, the problems of normal science have an assured solution and there are rules that limit both the nature of acceptable solutions and the steps by which they are to be obtained. Kuhn saw neither normal science nor puzzle solving as involving much creativity. Perhaps the most striking feature of normal research problems is how little they aim to produce major novelties, conceptual or phenomenal. Although a paradigm restricts the range of phenomena scientists examine, it does guarantee that certain phenomena are studied thoroughly by focusing attention upon a small range of relatively esoteric problems. The paradigm forces scientists to investigate some part of nature in a detail and depth that would otherwise be unimaginable. During the period when the paradigm is successful, the profession will have solved problems that its members could scarcely have imagined and would never have undertaken without commitment to the paradigm. And at least part of that achievement always proves to be permanent. That is the positive side of having research guided by a paradigm. But there is also a negative side. Although normal science allows for the thorough analysis of the phenomena on which a paradigm focuses, it blinds scientists to other phenomena and perhaps better explanations for what they are studying. Mopping up operations are what engage most scientists throughout their careers. They constitute what I am here calling normal science. Closely examined, whether historically or in the contemporary laboratory, that enterprise seems an attempt to force nature into the performed and relatively inflexible box that the paradigm supplied. No part of the aim of normal science is to call forth new sorts of phenomena. Indeed, those that will not fit the box are often not seen at all, nor do scientists normally aim to invent new theories. And they are often intolerant of those invented by others. Instead, Normal scientific research is directed to the articulation of those phenomena and theories that the paradigm already supplies. A paradigm, then, determines what constitutes a research problem and how the solution to that problem is sought. In other words, a paradigm guides all of the researchers' activities. More important, however, is that researchers become emotionally involved in their paradigm, it becomes part of their lives and is therefore very difficult to give up. How Sciences Change how do scientific paradigms change? According to Kuhn, not very easily. First, there must be persistent observations that a currently accepted paradigm cannot explain. These are called anomalies. Usually, a single scientist or a small group of scientists will propose an alternative viewpoint, one that will account for most of the phenomena that the prevailing paradigm accounts for and will also explain the anomalies. Kuhn indicated that there is typically great resistance to the new paradigm and that converts to it are won over very slowly. Eventually, however, the new paradigm wins out and displaces the old one. According to Kuhn, this describes what happened when Einstein challenged the Newtonian conception of the universe. Now the Einsteinian paradigm is generating its own normal science and will continue to do so until it is overthrown by another paradigm. Kuhn portrayed science as a method of inquiry that combines the objective scientific method and the emotional makeup of the scientist. Science progresses. 
according to Kuhn, because scientists are forced to change their belief systems. And belief systems are very difficult to change, whether for a group of scientists or for anyone else. The Stages of Scientific Development According to Kuhn, the development of a paradigm that comes to dominate a science occurs over a long period of time prior to the development of a paradigm. A science typically goes through a preparadigmatic stage during which a number of competing viewpoints exist during this period, which Kuhn referred to as pre-scientific. A discipline is characterized by a number of rival camps or schools, a situation contrary to unification and that results in, essentially, random fact-gathering. Such circumstances continue to exist until one school succeeds in defeating its competitors and becomes a paradigm. At this point, the discipline becomes a science, and a period of normal science begins. The normal science generated by the paradigm continues until the paradigm is displaced by a new one, which in turn will generate its own normal science. Kuhn saw sciences as passing through three distinct stages. The preparadigmatic stage, during which rival camps or schools compete for dominance of the field, the paradigmatic stage, during which the puzzle-solving activity called normal science occurs. And the revolutionary stage, during which an existing paradigm is displaced by another paradigm. Paradigms in Psychology What has all of this to do with psychology? Psychology has been described as a preparadigmatic discipline because it does not have one widely accepted paradigm but instead several competing schools or camps that exist simultaneously. For example, in psychology today we see camps that can be labeled behavioristic, functionalistic, cognitive, psychobiological, psychoanalytic, evolutionary, and humanistic. Some see this preparadigmatic situation as negative and insist that psychology is ready to synthesize all of its diverse elements into one unified paradigm. Other psychologists do not agree that psychology is a preparadigmatic discipline but claim that psychology is a discipline that has, and perhaps has always had, several coexisting paradigms or, at least, themes or research traditions for these psychologists. There has never been, nor has there been a need for, a Kuhnian type of revolution. The latter psychologists view the coexistence of several paradigms in psychology as healthy, productive, and perhaps inevitable because psychology studies humans. Mayer in 1994 notes that Kuhn was a physicist and says that perhaps his analysis of scientific change applied to that science but not others. For example, Mayer observes that several paradigms have always existed simultaneously in biology, and there was a kind of Darwinian competition for the acceptance of ideas among them. Successful ideas, no matter what their source, survived, and unsuccessful ideas did not. This natural selection among ideas is called evolutionary epistemology, and it conflicts with Kuhn's concept of paradigm shifts. The question remains as to whether psychology is more like biology or like physics in this regard. In this text, it is assumed that psychology is a multiparadigmatic discipline rather than a discipline at the preparadigmatic stage of development since Kuhn first published The Structure of Scientific Revolutions in 1962. The second edition was published in 1970. And the third in 1996, psychologists have generally embraced Kuhnian concepts and terminology in describing the status and history of their discipline. Driver Lin in 2003 discusses the possible reasons for Kuhn's widespread usage among psychologists, and some of the ambiguities and disagreements resulting from that usage. 